the church does not want you to consider any kind of separation of the cremated remains. Um, I know that you know some funeral homes and some places will say you can put some of dad in um, jewelry. Um, maybe you can just take some of them and you can do what you want to do with them. Maybe dad's original thoughts were that you know he wanted most of him to be laid to rest here at the cemetery, but he wanted part of him to be at the Pacific Ocean because it was a place that he was as a kid, as an example. Um, the church does not want us to separate those ashes. Again, your dad was a, you know, was, you know, a Christ child and, and is your loved one and should remain intact. You know, people may not want to lay their loved one to rest in holy and sacred ground in a cemetery. They say, I want to take them home and I want mom to be on the mantle. I haven't had, had a real chance to say goodbye. And what we've realized in, in, in talking to some counselors is that people don't heal from the loss of that loved one when they take them home or you know, they, they think that they want to you know, keep them close by. Part of the funeral process and why we have funerals is to actually say goodbye to our loved ones. The healing process doesn't start until you've actually said goodbye. So if, you're, if you take your loved one home and sit them on a mantle and walk by that you know, that urn every day and you see mom and you maybe say hi or whatever that process is, there's never that final, I said goodbye to my loved one and now I can start to heal from that. You know, we, we do see people, um, once they, they choose that particular uh, route subsequent to the death of a loved one, you know, wanting to hold on to those cremator remains. Um, <clears throat> you know, and there's a psychological reason for that. You know, about, you know, you, you know there is a truth about um, a desire to fill the voids of loss. And so we, we you know, really do lose something when somebody dies. Um, and one of the things, there's going to be a desire to hold on to something, and cremated remains are the obvious thing that one would want to hold on to. And it's just not a good idea. It's not really, it doesn't enable, you know, psychological or spiritual healing um, because you just never kind of get away from that. You never really turn that over to God in a sense. And so we try to meet people with mercy, but kind of let them know the truth about what, what you know, the long-term effect that has. And so as an example, we use a comfort cross. That cross comes in two pieces. Um, you know, it's, it's stone that comes from the Holy Land. The, the cross itself is cut in half um, and, and, and lengthwise. And one piece will go into the urn and the other piece goes home with a family. And it does two things. One, it allows those cremated remains to be placed in holy and sacred space with, with others that have died. You know, in holy and sacred space, we have mass all the time. We have, um, we pray for those those people all the time, and 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 it's on consecrated ground. It's ground that, you know, when when a Catholic cemetery is consecrated, you know, the bishop will go to the corners of the cemetery and consecrate that area, you know, entirely. And then it allows. Um, psychological healing. It allows somebody not to be, you know, per perpetually, um, you know, kind of hindered by that loss. It allows them to move on and, and have faith in God and in, in the story of the resurrection. And so, so a really important thing to think about um, and, 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 you know, another really important reason, you know, not to, um, not to take those cremated remains home not to scatter them, um, and, and, and then also certainly not to break them into pieces so others in the family can have you know, pieces of a loved one. And you would, certainly wouldn't do that with a, with a body, and we, we don't recommend that with cremated remains.